Hi. So, I'm back down by the lake again. Um, in my garden. And it's all very peaceful today because uh, we're on a full-on curfew. And I'm talking to you... Today we're going to talk about the uh, Trasena of Akpu. So, this is the afternoon of 13 Kawok. And Kawok is beginning to make herself known. You may hear some rumbles of thunder as we go through this. Hopefully it's not going to rain. I was very lucky yesterday making a solstice ceremony in the middle of June with no rain, which was a very unusual event, a very happy event. So, we've gone through possibly which one of something which may be one of the hardest kind of like days of the calendar in some respects. The 12 Tihash and 13 Kawok. Uh, a lot of change, a lot of um, uh, stuff happening. You know, Tihash cutting away that doesn't serve us. Bringing the healing, bringing unification, but also kind of like, you know, that being some, some tough love, some tough, you know, some tough surgery coming along. Using all of our life skills to go through it, them going through 13 kilowatt. Now that's coincided with the solstice, and then with the solar eclipse, which happened earlier today, and then tomorrow we're going into Hunachpu, and we see today what Hunachpu means. Well, Achpu is the Nawal which represents the sun, it's the world of light, it's the, the heroes, Hunachpu and Ishbalam Kiach of the, of the Popol Vuh, well Hunachpu is one of those. You know, Hunachpu was one of the twins who went down into Shibalba to, to rescue his father. Hun Hunachpu, which is another name for tomorrow's day, Hun Hunachpu. And so, what it is is about the light coming back to the world. It's more than just the light coming to the world. It's the light within us as well. It's about our own hero, our greatest possible state, our, you might say, God self, or however, however that might work. It's about our true mission here in this incarnation to do what we're supposed to be doing, to allow that hero to come out of us. That one who you know, I could say works for the light. I'm not overly kind of like keen with that particular type of phraseology, but it's about finding that light within you, what your mission is, what your divine path is. That's really what it's about. Now, in the Popol Vuh, the twins go down to the underworld and they resurrect the head of their father. They bring the head of the father back to the world. Hunapu returns to the surface, the light comes back. Now, we also have this part of it which is Sevenachpu, the old sun, the dead sun, that stays in the underworld, he stays in the underworld. And this is this 20 day period that we've just been through and it leads up to Hunapu, Wanachpu, the new sun coming back. Now, when I've kind of like been looking into this, working with this, thinking about this and trying to just kind of like get my head around it all and think of it all, how it works. We can see it. You know, with these changes of sun, I don't think it's necessarily about the creation of new beings. I think it's about the creation of new civilization. And so what we've seen in the past 20 days is the death of the old civilization the death of the old sun in order for the new sun to come into the world. And that begins tomorrow, that happens tomorrow. The light comes back in one way or another, the new civilization is born. And I personally think that this can be a very exciting time, you know, this is maybe what we're all looking for, for the, 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 the new world to begin. And yes, it happens every 260 days, but with the solstice, the solstice happening on 12 Tihash, the last time that happened was 42 years ago in 1978. So it's not something which happens every 260 days with this particular configuration. Solstice followed by an eclipse. Well, 
I've been searching around and I'm yet to find out exactly when the last solar eclipse on the June solstice happened. So I can't tell you that information yet. I'll keep trying, but like it's not there yet. And of course, we've also had during this time, during this last 20 days, we've had Venus returning as the morning star. And so you've got a whole bunch of celestial events happening in coherence with the calendar as well and so I think that makes this a very powerful very dramatic time so what's it all about well as I said Hunach Pu is looking for that hero within yourself and so I use the word hero in the same way that we now would refer to anybody who is acting in a movie as an actor. The difference between actor and actress has dropped away. They've made it just actor. And so when I talk about hero, I'm not necessarily just talking about the masculine. Of course, I'm embracing the heroine within that as well, but I'm just gonna use the word hero throughout this. So, what does your hero do? What is your true role? within this story of your incarnation on Earth? How are you here to make the world a better place? What have you got to search for? Now, if we look into, you know, Joseph Campbell's work, The Hero's Journey and all this kind of thing, this is kind of like going through the trials. You go from your normal life, you go from everything being the way it was, the status quo. Status quo is turned upside down and you're given a quest, you're given a task. You go into the other world, you seek it out. You go and confront the demon, as it were, or the dragon, or whatever it is that you might kind of like feel within that. And through your victory, you're then able to bring back the elixir to the ordinary world. Because, you know, if we're talking about empowerment, if we're finding about our true path and all of that kind of thing, well, what for? You're doing it for fame and fortune? Well, okay, if that's your thing, then why not? But, like, really, it's about, okay, so you've found that essence within you. Now what are you going to do with it? How are you going to make your community, your world, a better place? So, in the Popol Vuh, the hero twins bring the head of Hunakpu Hun back, uh, back to the upper world and bring the new civilization, bring the new light, bring the new sun to the world. So this is also looking at like how do you engage with your hero? How do you face the trials and that you're set? Because you know the hero doesn't just get it like that. You have to go through the trials to prove your worth of it before you can bring it back to the world. So I think it's a very, very interesting Tresena, as you can tell. So much so that obviously we created a retreat around it, the retreat that hopefully, you know, obviously no one knows what's going on right now. We don't know what's going to happen in the next month, the next six months, the next nine months. But we have to start planning, we have to have an idea. So we are relaunching our Hunachpu retreat to begin on Hunachpu, which is going to be March 9th, of 2021 which will be the retreat the journey to El Mirador and the 13-day retreat that we've been organizing before so we'll see hope it's going to happen because it's going to be an awesome journey and it's all based around that same thing so the Tresena of Achpu is going to begin on the day one Achpu on the day Kun Achpu the birth of the new sun, the spark, the initial idea of where your spiritual path might lie from here on in. What has woken up within you? What has fallen away in 12 Tihash, in 13 Kawat? What has fallen away and been washed away there to enable your new hero to emerge from you? What is your life's mission? How can you facilitate that life's mission coming into your being you know it's kind of like how can you grasp it one achpu may give you an idea of that maybe it's a day to sit down meditate if you have the opportunity on what is your divine plan what is your divine mission what are you here to do you know if it's if it's here to do a job if it's here to do whatever it is to do it doesn't matter but like like get an idea of your higher purpose 
on the day Hunak Pug. But it's a beginning, it's a spark that needs to be kindled into a fire, into the new sun, into the new light. So it may not necessarily begin happening tomorrow, but tomorrow is the day to begin planning it. From Hunak Pug, we're then going to go into Tu Imosh. And I know that with, um, with Tihash I talk about discernment and that kind of thing, but like with Imosh we're talking about the dream, with Imosh we're talking about the waters, and with the number two we're talking about choices and duality. And so what we can see with Tu Imosh is something to do with choosing your dream. You know, it's kind of like we've all got our dreams about what we'd like to achieve, how we'd like to achieve them and that kind of thing. And Tu Imosh is really saying, right, okay, you're going on this path or that path, okay? Like, which is the dream that you want to follow in this new next 260 day cycle, in this next 13 day cycle? So it may be kind of like, there may be a, a very kind of like this or that, choice that you have to make, a very black and white decision as to am I going to follow this dream or am I going to follow that dream. The important thing will be to make the choice. Now with Imosh we're also talking about our connection with the collective consciousness and it might be kind of like tapping into which ch collective ch consciousness you're going to choose. Are you going to choose the, you know, these people over here or these people over here as people that you embrace within your psychic field and so maybe there's something about the dream being revealed as to what's true and what's false within that. From Tu Imosh we're then going to go into Three Ik. Now an important part of following your dream, an important part of the whole process is very much going to be listening to our inner voice. Now the three, I often talk about it being kind of like maybe some kind of like external blockages and as I think I've said enough times, it's kind of like it's not necessarily that the external is blocked, it's just that where, it, where the energy is focused is on the creativity within. And so for three, eek, it's very much about listening to your inner voice. So once again we see a great day for meditation, a great day to go inside to hear really what your inner voice is saying with regards to your mission because it's still on the Hunak Pu day. It's like, what's your inner calling? So it's a great day for a meditation to go inside. It's a great day to, to stop, take a moment, to listen to what you're saying to yourself, to your internal dialogue about how you're going to approach this journey, how you're going to work on this journey, which direction you should be headed in. From three ik, we're then going into four achabal. So achabal, the night and the day, the dawn, the dusk, the new concepts. And here we're taking it and we're bringing it into the physical realm because that's the four, yeah? So it's kind of like taking a new concept and as you step into the other world, as it were, as you step into the world where you go to find the essence of your hero, there's going to be some new concepts come up. Well, this is the time to physically ground them. They're not going to be full and ready. They are the foundation for this new sun. They're the foundation. They're laying down the physical um, essence for this new creation to begin. So it's a great day for planning stuff. It's not about having everything sorted on that day. It's about setting down the groundwork getting it ready, getting prepared, you know, Achabal is the dawn, it's the new day coming in. So we're setting the physical foundation for the new sun to rise. So again, lots of prep work, lots of planning, that's a four Achabal day, but, you know, it's not quite ready yet, because Achabal, you know, it's like, it's like the child within the mother, it's not ready to be born yet, but we're getting it together. From four Achabal, we're then going into five cap cat and we're sorting through our bag working out what we need to take on our journey what we can let go of what really has its um, its strength in the world that we're leaving behind what can we can detach from that we no longer need to carry forward so that we can complete this journey now that's something that again 
it requires some introspection and the five would consider that it requires some work as well that it's not something which is just kind of like easily dropped away and sometimes we have to work on the release of the attachments to the old world so that we can step into the new and we see this in the you know in the hero's journey kind of like sometimes there's a reason like why you can't stay in the um in the world anymore and i could go into lots of popular fiction with this I mean, you know why the hero is literally kind of like forced into the into the other world why they are detached from what their home was why they have to go on that journey so it's kind of like looking at it as putting your energy in and saying right okay yeah now i really need to detach from that so that i can move forward and go find this elixir go and find out what's going on inside of me and bring out my best side from five cat we then move into six can so can is the power the wisdom can is the empowerment and the teacher and this is one of the first steps that we go through it's kind of like meeting the ally and that kind of thing meeting the mentor what are you going to learn who's going to teach you how does that work okay now it's about the six is about yes bringing it into the physical but drawing on heaven and earth drawing on above and below in order to bring that in so maybe you'll get some divine intervention or like a divine mentor steps forward in whatever way shape or form that might take to bring you the wisdom that you need on that journey to teach you also to help you to understand you know it's like the divine intervention that helps you to see through the illusion to the truth so lady kawok did decide to show up and i've hastily beaten a retreat back to my office to um, get out of the rain and so from six can we're then going to go into seven kame we'll call kame now this is a really really interesting um, combination because firstly we can say about seven kame being like the death of death that's one way we can look at it but also in the popovu when the hero twins have their victory over the lords of Shibalba, when they basically subdue the Shibalbans and are able to bring their, their father's head back to the world, bring Hunakpu back to the world, it is seven Kamei that they, that they kill last, basically. He is the, the ultimate um, demon, for want of better words. And so seven Kame is really about overcoming and finally overcoming your biggest demon. Now, of course, when we go into that, when we face that biggest demon, it's scary, it's not fun. You know, it's kind of like facing some of the greatest fears that we're likely to have to face. But it's through facing them and coming to terms with them, understanding them, maybe slaying them, however that might work, because I don't always see it as you have to, to slay the dragon. I don't see it as you have to, you know, you have to kill that demon. It's like perhaps one of the most powerful things to do is to understand it and then make it your ally. You know, to, to tame the dragon. To rather than go out, you know, you thought you were on this quest to go and like, slay the dragon. When you got there, you ended up having a bit of a chat with it and end up kind of like bringing it back to the world, you know, as the, as the dragon rider or something like that. I don't know. But like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's not just about just kind of like bashing something out of your way because you're scared of it. The real essence comes out of understanding it. So Seven Kame may bring up fears for you but they are the fears that you have to overcome in order to move into that state of being that allows your inner hero to emerge in its greatest aspect. So whilst we might see Seven Kame as a day which, you know, which is kind of like a rather intimidating day at the, at the sight of it, we also know that this is the final test. This is the one that when we overcome this, we're really able to move forward. 
And as we do move forward from seven kame, what do we move into? We move into eight kech. Now eight kech is seen as an alternative day for the initiation of higher level spiritual leaders. It's a day on which we connect with the wholeness of the natural world, where we fully embrace the natural world. And so when we understand that, when we see that, we understand why, okay, we had to slay a demon to go forward, to be initiated into this higher level of understanding. So Eik Kech is a great day, you know, if you can get out to go out into the nature, into the natural world, to connect with animals, to connect with plants, to connect with nature in whatever way, on all levels, because the eight is the wholeness. And that wholeness is where we get our true information from. We don't get our information from just understanding one side of the story. We need to understand it in its wholeness. And so when we can wholly connect with nature, that's when we really become initiated. Now, the other way that we can also talk about this, the other way that we can also see the, um, the Eight Kech working in our lives is to get these signs from animals. This is a, a day of ceremony. This is a day of ceremony for nature. This is a day of ceremony for the animals. And so it's a great time to be doing those kinds of things. So your ceremony, yeah, sure, you may, maybe you want to make a, a Mayan ceremony, maybe you want to make a Celtic ceremony, maybe you want to make a, a whatever ceremony to give thanks for what you receive from the natural world, to give thanks for what you receive from the animals of the world, to give thanks for your connection to nature. But also within that, that ceremony is what initiates you, that ceremony is what takes you forward. It's an initiation, it's stepping over the threshold. So your connection with nature on Eight Kech is very strong and it's a great day to be out in nature. Your ceremony might be picking up litter. Your ceremony might be revigorating the natural world, you know, getting your hands into the earth in one way or another. That's going to come in the next day as well. But, you know, kind of like revigorating your connection in order to step to the higher level. From Eik Kech, we're then going to go into Nine Anil. And Anil, the seed. Anil, the ripening, the yellowing. This is where we're taking it forward. This is the future day in the cross of Wan Achpu. Nine Anil is its destiny. This is what it's ripening into. Nine Anil, the ripening of life. And surely this is something which, if you're on some kind of spiritual quest in whatever way, shape or form that might take, then the ripening of life is what it's really all about. And so on Nine Anil, this is a, a great day to say, okay, once again, where am I taking it? What am I hoping to ripen into? Anil days are great days to be out in the garden. They're great days to be planting seeds. They're great days to be asking for the blessing of Anil on your gardens, on your crops, in order to bring them to their full and abundant maturity, in order to bring whatever you plant that day to its ripening, whether that's the seed of your intention, the seed of your idea, however that might be. The nine is the number of the feminine. The nine is also the number of life. And in this way, we can see it's the maturing of your life. So once again, this might be a day that's full of ideas as to where you want to, what you want to ripen into. Who is this ripe and mature hero within you that's developing throughout this Tresena? From nine, Anil, we're then going into ten Toch. So Toch, in a world of payment, of service, of sacrifice for one idea or another. It's a day to give back, it's a day to give thanks. It's a day, once again, it's a ceremonial day, it represents a ceremonial fire. It's a day to give back for all that you've received in the world. So, as you go through that, it's a great time to be making your offering. Who are you making your offering to? Well, the number 10 represents community. 
So this is a great day to be making an offering, making a payment to your community. Now once again, as I've been doing since uh, we've been in this situation, I'll be sharing some links. They should be appearing on your screen right now. They'll also be in the, uh, the description of this video. To relief support programs here in Guatemala for San Pablo, for San Juan, for San Marcos. So if you want to make a payment to a community, Ten Toch is a great day to do it. Because what it's about is like Toch, when you're making that payment on a Toch day, it's something that really hits the mark, you know? It's kind of like it has more benefit than it might on other days. So if you want to give back for your health, for others' health, you know, for, for what you've received in this world, Ten Toch's a great day to be giving to you, your community or the communities here. From Ten Toch, we're then going into 11C. 11C, so Z, faith. Loyalty, justice, law, okay? It's got all of those things going on. And it might suggest that we're really going around looking for different areas of faith. You know, as we go through this hero's journey, as we're walking through these trials, these challenges, our faith is being tested. It's like, are you really strong enough? Are you really developed enough to carry that great energy of the hero that's within you? Z comes to tempt us sometimes. It's our guide, that's for sure. And it can show us the right direction, but sometimes it's also showing us the other things that might help us to fall off our path from time to time. And so, as such, this is something where it's about looking around you and discerning which direction to go in, what you want to draw on, because there's different areas that you might draw on to enhance your faith, and to en en enhance your loyalty to yourself, to your journey, to your spiritual quest. 11C might bring up some old patterns, some old temptations. You know, this is all part of the challenges that the hero faces. It's like, will you fall back when that old pattern presents itself? Will you fall back or will you overcome it this time? 11C is guiding us through, but it's also testing us. And so be aware of that on 11C. Maybe some old pattern, maybe some old temptation might come up. Let's say, right, okay, okay are you ready to get over this or are you going to fall back into that old pattern again? From 11C... We then move into 12 bats. Again, I think this is going to be a wonderful day. Because bats is about the creation. It's about weaving all the threads together. Bringing out the beauty to the world. Bringing your art into the world in whatever way, shape or form that might take. And the number 12 is drawing on all of your life experience. So if you imagine that all of the experiences that you've gone through in life are the threads with which you can weave the new pattern, the threads with which you can weave this beautiful fabric, this beautiful tapestry that is your art, that's your expression of your creation into the world. Whether you're a writer, an artist, a painter, a singer, a photographer, a videographer, whatever your chosen art is, this is a day to draw on all of your experience and weave it together into one beautiful example of your creativity and then finally we move into the Nawal 13 Ech 13 Ech, Ech the path, the journey Ech the one who goes to experience and the number 13 the spiritual world the, the, the ancestors so 13 Ech can really easily be seen as a spiritual path. And this is the ultimate day of the Hunach Putra Sena. So you see, it starts off with this seed of an idea of what's taking you on your spiritual quest, and it ends up with a presentation of your spiritual path from the ancestors. So 13 Ech is a great day to get guidance on where you're going. What can take you forward? I said that Hunach Pu is like the seed of the, it's the beginning of that, that journey to you know, the ultimate um, self, as it were. And it ends up 
in this day where we can receive this understanding of how to be guided forward on that path. So as I said, I think that this is a very, very interesting Trisena. It's certainly kind of like I could say, you know, one of my favorites. It's not without its challenges, but it's really taking us to that higher place. It will then be followed by the Ach Trisena, which is right, okay, now you've got that higher place. Now you've got that higher self or your connection to that higher self. How do you employ it back into your community? How do you use it to bring harmony in the world? But we'll deal with that in 13 days time. So thanks for listening once again. I wish you a great deal of good fortune on your journey. I wish you strength for facing your challenges. And I look forward to talking to you about the Tresena of Ach in 13 days time. Thank you.